Welcome back everyone to Mark Halibut's vlog. Thanks for joining in on this wonderful day. And you know, we're out for a stroll again and it got me thinking about the car prices again. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the Jaguar this week and actually on Sunday, be sure to drop by because we'll get back into some F-type content. I think you'll find it quite interesting and maybe somewhat amusing, but anyway, it got me thinking, you know, last week I talked about Corvettes and you know, what, what the market's essentially like. But I want to expand on that because I've been thinking about this a little bit. And I've been doing a little bit deeper dive and a little further research on the matter. Oh, it's quite busy here today. Lots of cars buzzing around. And, <clears throat> sorry, and some of the research is showing me certain things and I, I kind of want to bring to light. I mean, we know that Corvettes have been grossly overpriced, but I want to dive a little bit into that a little further. Whoa. And look at this, we have, yeah, at your own risk is what I would say, riding on one of these units. Um, at least in recent recent months, recent years, typically ride your own uh, at your own risk. But what we're talking, what actually is a Corvette pricing, and they're not actually selling. So there's this weird aura, sort of a phenomenon right now, regardless of what everybody thinks they're selling like hotcakes, and there's lots of them selling. Chevy's creating a lot of them, building a lot of them, and a lot of them are hitting the market. There are certain models that are selling and certain models that aren't selling so hot. And I kind of want to touch on that because it's very important if we've been out shopping or you've been out shopping for Corvettes. I've been starting to look around a little bit and I don't know, it's just one of those things I believe that the market's not quite as robust as a lot of people are led to believe. So obviously we have the Stingray. That was the original naturally aspirated 6.2. Now we have the five and a half liter flat plane crank. That is the Ferrari base type engine in the Z06. And not only that, we also have the E-Ray, which we won't talk about now because that's kind of a marketplace that's just coming out. And we all know when the, uh, the Stingray came out, it was the hottest thing since sliced bread. Of course, their timing was right. The fact of the matter was it was the latest and greatest, had a mid-engine. Corvette did some great things. They were competitive with some of the supercars out there and people just wanted to get their hands on one of those things. So obviously there was a, a claw and an effort to try to get hands on to some of these these early generation stingrays now they're sort of caught up stingrays are kind of old news the new news is the z06 and what's happening you know i've dug into some essentially some um I've done some homework here and, and i've checked on some of the sales and what we're talking about even for example bring my trailer done some assessments on some of the um purchases and sales of some of these cars now what i can say is what we're seeing with the stingray they've always been very popular and a lot of it again was timing you know everybody was sitting at home they felt like they wanted to buy one um they need to spend it on something and a lot of people weren't traveling so they're like i'm gonna buy that next gray greatest toy great so they were buying stingrays and competition was up and you know supply was down because of the uh the chips but at the end of the day there was a real buzz and honestly stingray or stingrays were a great thing and they still are a very very cool car so corvettes are, again are still that underdog you know they're punching above their weight class but then along comes the z06 and you know we've talked about what that market's starting to kind of look like where it's becoming ultra competitive people are putting down money ahead of time sight unseen hoping their number comes up and then they're grossly overpaying and there's some dealers that have been seen charging you know you know eighty hundred thousand dollars over a sticker just for the sale of a z06 because they say well if you don't pay it the next person might so they're playing a little bit awkward out there there's been a lot of weird games out there going on but now what's happening is chevy has pulled a bit of a wiener on people and said wait a minute six months is your signing time so if you sell that car within six months time frame then what you might be subject to is a loss or void of your warranty so now what's happening is there's people out there they're thinking oh yeah oh i'm gonna scalp these cars i'm gonna get a z06 and because it's the hottest thing and people are overpaying and waiting for these cars and so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a quick and dirty here i'm gonna buy a car i'm gonna chuck it on the auction and people are gonna pay me eighty thousand dollars over sticker for it and life's good and i'm gonna make a pile of cash well guess what chevy has decided to intervene and they're adding that clause where you can't sell the car for six months or a year and then of course what that means is if you don't have warranty it just puts you in a state of sort of unsure to couple to that 
this new five and a half liter V8 is a wondrous piece. I mean, there's lots of people talking about how great it is. It's basically modeled after Ferrari's 458, just a larger displacement. What they did, he basically was bought a 458 Italia engine, took it, stripped it down, reverse engineered, and built their own based on what they saw. They found an engine on eBay and they broke it down. So that's kind of how Chevy decided, hey, we're gonna try to beat them at their own game. And they created this car, it's five and a half liter V8 that screams, sounds F1, and it's just amazing. Puts down serious performance with 670 horsepower. Also made it up to a double clutch transmission spectacular i mean it, it is awesome and, and i'm not gonna lie that it probably is the car i want in terms of corvette world however the big here however no warranty puts you at a risk okay if you were buying a lexus or you're buying a toyota you wouldn't worry yeah i'll buy it without warranty it's a bit of a risk but guess what there's been cases where people have talked about blowing up engines and there's been several noted uh incidents where some of these z06s have blown up knock 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 all of a sudden they're knocking on the back door and next thing you know you're stuck with a thirty thousand dollar bill for a new engine because you don't have that warranty because you elected to buy that car or sell that car essentially and get involved in a transaction through the back door that chevy wasn't involved with that they didn't allow and of course now you have an engine that's a high risk with no warranty and people are realizing that so what's starting to happen now is these people are trying to scalp these cars and they go to the auctions. They go to the bring my trailer. They try to pitch them in places like that. And then what's going on, the cars aren't selling because people are already seeing, wait a minute, there's a track record here. I'm buying this car without warranty because now they're flipping it and Chevy's not allowing that or not on board with it. So to buy a car through that sort of transaction means you're not having a warranty and you're putting yourself way out there at risk just for the sake of having the latest. Not to mention, you know the old adage, you never buy the first of any year because that's usually there's lots of bugs to work out. And this is no different. Chevy's probably, honestly, probably getting better, working out, figuring out some of the nuances. We know they had some gearbox issues in early generation Stingrays. Yeah, they did. But I think a lot of that's in the rear view mirror. Now they got engine issues in the Z06. Hopefully they get that sorted out because this is one of those cars that I'd love to buy. So ultimately what's happening now is you can go out, buy yourself a Stingray. You can still get some used ones on the car lot. And yeah, there's some great deals now because now they're coming off of leases. They're coming off of, you know, the warranty. So they're two or three years in and back in 2020 means that some of the early generation ones are now three years old. So warranty's long gone. And now, well, what do we got here? Noisemaker 9000 right there, perfect. And um, and so what's happening now is there's actually quite a flood of them on the market. So you have lots of choices, but if I can advise, I'd say people are overpaying. There's still prices are holding high, even on the Stingrays. I'd say, you know what? Why don't, maybe the better choice is put your dollars down on a new one. Walk into the dealer if you want to have a Stingray Pick your colors, pick your trim, buy one new and not overpay. And you'll have a new car right off the lot and you won't have to worry about what the last owner did, bag, bagging it, showing it on YouTube, you know, running it, redlining it, doing the hard launches. You don't worry about that because you're the first one to drive the car. So personally, I would say nix all of that aftermarket, gray market shit and basically go directly to the dealer. If the dealers are overpricing, go to the next dealer because there's some dealers still gouging and are living in yester years, but there's some dealers that are matching up with MSRP and there might even be a few that I've heard of that are slightly under sticker. If you're negotiating and you're coming, catching them on the right day, you know what you will find higher levels of trim are always gonna be sought after. Those are gonna be harder to negotiate. But again, garden variety, mid-level, 2LT trim, for example, or base models, you'll find some better deals on 3LT, you're going to pay through the nose, some cool, interesting parts and pieces and colors and so on. But what I would suggest is go into the dealer. Instead of guessing at it, if you're serious about buying a Corvette, seriously look at new instead of buying used. The Z06, even more importantly, as I said, there's engine issues. If you go in now, you put your name in a hat, 
maybe in a year or two you'll get your z06 and then by that time hopefully further development has happened on that engine and hopefully you won't have problems with reliability so prices are down what we're seeing is again cars now z06s are only probably only about 20 percent of them are actually selling in these auctions whereas what we're talking about the uh stingrays what we're finding is probably about 60 percent are selling but there's still a huge amount of them not selling and a lot of that is because people are realizing prices are going to start getting caught up inventory's catching up and people are realizing you know what no i'm not going to get suckered into this little game and you know what i would too i would avoid all of that get work these scalpers out of the game go into the dealer check out new and just give a little time i think you'll find there's might be some great cars to be had so anyway hope that helps everyone with all of that said corvette's still on my radar i think they're amazing vehicles on on top of it be sure to come back on sunday you're gonna love my next video some great interesting funzy content with the f-type it's back yes you betcha so hope to see each and every one of you remember life's too short to drive boring cars hit that subscribe button and we'll see you all real later bye bye